Hello, I'm Q. Welcome to my garage where I build guitars, fix guitars, design guitars, and occasionally have to make some furniture or uh, cutting boards or some kind of crap like that. Today's topic, let me get the magic dust here. How to adjust your truss rod without tools. Side note, except for the truss rod wrench. All right, you are the greatest tool in adjusting your truss rod. Do with that statement what you wish. Uh, yeah, you are your greatest tool. So, how do we do that? Let's cut the uh, saddle section. That's a different uh, topic, but let's assume your saddles are within an acceptable range of height. Your saddles are for action and playability. Your truss rod is not for action or playability. It is for clearance. You need this fret here when you push your string onto it for the string to clear this fret here. That's it. You either have too much neck relief or you have too little. You want to be right in between too much and too little. There's, there's no other answer. Okay? It's not, oh, I like my neck to have a lot more relief because... Now, all you're doing is in decreasing your intonation and you're increasing your string tension which is causing you to play harder. Uh, and you're also, in a traditional truss rod, you're lowering the resonance of your neck because the truss rod's not making good contact with the front of the neck. So let's not listen to those guys who are like, I like, you know, a little less really. No, you either have too much clearance or you don't have enough. And you can do this with your ears. Again, your saddles are in an acceptable range. Play the first four frets. Listen for the chatter, okay? If you hear any chatter at all, or any fret buzz, you know, just little noises that shouldn't be there or unacceptable while you're playing at a proper position. Clean amp, you know, a decent pick, uh, you know, you're not digging into the strings. You can make any string buzz by how hard you play it. So make sure that you're kind of not being too gentle, but not being too forceful, how you would normally play in a performance. Play it, listen, tighten it up. Play it again, listen. Wait until you hear something that's totally unacceptable to the human ear, and then back it off. And when you get that point where it's right, right there on the cusp, you know, you're right there. You know, you want it to, to sound crappy, and then back off to just the point where right before it sounded crappy. Okay, that's it. That's it. You don't need the feeler gauge. Why, why use a feeler gauge and get your guitar in a certain range? But I have a manual, and it says I have the proper relief for this guitar is this and the numbers, and I need a feeler gauge to put underneath the ninth fret, and shut up. You're a man. You're reading the manual? You kidding me? Sarah, Susan, Jim, all you guys out there shaking your heads saying I'm wrong. This is America. You've forgotten. We throw away the manuals and the instructions. Your ear is telling you you don't hear any fret rattle. So that's correct. Trust your instincts and what you hear and what you feel. So that's my spiel. If you have any questions about this, comments or concerns, send them to me. That's how I do things around here for the most part and uh, it works pretty good so far. Okay, you don't you don't build the chair that came from Ikea by reading the instructions. You just lay the parts out and you see what happens. That's how we do stuff. They didn't build the Empire State Building by blueprints. They just put a bunch of steel and brick in the middle of downtown New York and hired a bunch of guys off the bread lines. And then three months later we had a building. This is how things are done. By this one. It just needs to clear just enough, okay? It's like the border wall in Mexico. Yeah, you just kind of want to straddle over. You want to climb up the wall, throw a leg over, and then climb down. You don't want to catapult yourself 20 feet over the wall and worry about your parachute opening. Okay. Ah.